Hello and welcome to Dreams of Wings and welcome here to Farnborough Airport in Hampshire on this rather pleasant March morning. I have to say the weather isn't too bad at all. We are going to be mixing it up with those posh corporate jets, those private jets that sneer in the face of our little propeller-driven GA aircraft. But do we care? No, we don't, because we are in the A2A Piper Comanche 250 otherwise known as the Accusim Comanche. It's a gorgeous aeroplane. We don't need this citation. Why would you need a citation when you've got something as characterful and beautiful as this? And this is a wonderful repaint by Ron Atwood of Golf Alpha Papa X-Ray Juliet, which is a, uh, a real Piper Comanche based here in the UK. So, Two things. First of all, we are going to be taking a look at the brand new TDS GTNXI Pro Upgrade, uh, which is a new feature, which I'll talk about. And also do stay tuned because a little bit later, especially if you haven't seen the uh, recent video at the Battle of Britain Memorial flight, also going to show you a little bit about a new piece of hardware that Authenticate are working on. Uh, which is is really going to be a must-have for all Comanche fans, I'm sure. This is going to be an IFR practice flight. I am not an expert. I actually do this to practice for myself, but we're going to be using the new Pro Upgrade for the GTN XI, and uh, we're going to be taking a flight over to Cardiff. Slightly odd route because it's a route from Simbrief, but it'll give us a good chance to have a look at all our systems and give them a good run. Anyway, let's get cracking. Well, here we are in this beautiful, beautiful cockpit. All this character, who needs one of those shiny jets? Plus, we've got uh, Squadron Dog number two, as yet to be named. Uh, Duxford, who is Squadron Dog number one, he only flies in military helicopters and warbirds at the moment, if there's space for him. Uh, Squadron Dog number two flies in civilian aircraft, and uh, he loves going in the Comanche, don't you, boy? Yes. Um... Right, would you mind closing the door? Oh yeah, I forgot. No opposable thumbs. Okay. Let's just latch that. So yeah, as I said, uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, an IFR route from Farnborough to Cardiff. I've used a sim brief route and uh, really because of the nature of it, it's, it's not the route you'd normally take in an aircraft like this but uh, it's the route we're going to take nonetheless because it gives us a chance to really have a look at the TDN XI Pro upgrade, which, of course, as I'm sure you know, means that we can now use with Navigraph, which is just absolutely fantastic. It's, what, it, it's one of the things that people have said. Um, they love the TDS system because, of course, it uses the Garmin trainer, but it's frustrating that it doesn't connect to the Navigraph data. So your GPS is quite often running different data to whatever other software you're using. We don't have that problem anymore. And also we can look at the charts on the GTN, which is just blooming fantastic. I'm so excited. And a huge thank you to TDS uh, for giving me the opportunity to try the Pro Upgrade. I bought the GTN some time ago because I just thought it's a must-have. Um, but, uh, yeah, TDS have been kind enough to let me give the upgrade a try. And uh, that's what I'm doing, showing you today on the video. Uh, I just think it's fantastic news. Right, so let's bring up the tablet and have a look. Uh, so... It's uh, Golf Alpha Papa X-Ray Juliet, of course, with the A2A Comanche. The uh, aircraft state is very much based on the livery that you're flying. So uh, good old Golf X-Ray Juliet. Not flown a much because I tend to fly my VA uh, Comanche more, uh, or most of the time, actually. Um, but I thought for this video, we'd give X-Ray Juliet a good old workout. I've just opened the storm window there because, as you can see, we were steaming up a bit, thanks to uh, Squadron Dog number two. I just think of a name for him. Uh, right, so let's have a quick look at maintenance. So we will just check in with our virtual engineers and just see how things are going. So let's inspect the airframe. Uh, we've got low voltage on the battery. That's probably because it's been sat sitting doing nothing for a while. Uh, so we'll have a look at that. Uh, the engine, let's have a quick inspection of that. Engine's looking okie dokie. Engine analyzer, no point at the moment because we're not running. 
but the electrical system we can see our battery is a little bit low so by the magic of Farnborough Airport we're going to borrow some equipment from ooh, that private jet over there I'm sure their ground crew can help and uh, we'll give it a zap it's over here isn't it there we go and now we're green so we are good to go on there but we do need to do a walk around so uh sorry mate i uh i did say can you close the door but uh now we need to open it again don't we he said of course we did oh, that's why i was sitting here doing nothing idiot um because that's exactly what he sounds like by the way uh right let us now have a look at uh you know, i've just noticed something I've just noticed something, but we'll have a look at that in a sec. Right, so it is time to do the walk around. So, uh, oh, sorry, mate. I did ask you to close the door, but we need to open again. Yeah, I knew that. I just wasn't going to tell you, you idiot. Um, that was him, by the way. That's that's actually what they sound like. Uh, oh, quickly going to say, I've uh, fueled the aircraft up. As you can see, we've got a medium load. And we've got to myself, and we've got uh, squadron dog number two here. Right, uh, let's have a quick look over here. So we'll jump outside now, go back to the walk around, uh, check that we've got, yeah, both fuel tanks. And I'm going to, where's my control here? There we go. Drop the flap just for the inspection. Just having a quick look here and just noticing also that the landing gear is in the down position, which is where we want it. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? Right, let's give this a, a grab. That's looking good. Same with the aileron. Nice, uh, sturdy control there. Have a look at the tip tank. We haven't got a huge amount in there, but we should still be able to see a little dribble at the bottom. There we go. And we will close that. And oof, down to the bottom, first drum of the day. Excellent. All our vitamins in one shot. Landing lights looking good. Down here we've got the tie downs uh, have been removed, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. Uh, oh, just jump back. No, we won't jump back. Let's have a quick look there. Yep, tank is full. That's great. I do love these little uh, animations. Pop underneath, check the tyre state. Tyre state is good. Uh, we're going to remove the chock. Pop over here. We'll now check the fuel sump. And because we left the fuel tank selectors on, we can have our second drum of the day. Packed with vitamin C, D and uh, something else. That's all good. So we can close that. Check around the front. Just make sure we've got no Hampshire birdies nesting in there. And it's all looking good. Stace the propeller is excellent. Very happy with that. We shall check the hoil. Why oh, I said it like that. Irritating. There we go. And yep, yeah, oil is uh, nice and clean. Of course, A to A will simulate the colour of the oil to show how old and knackered it is. But that's good. And we are well above nine. So happy with that. Uh, let's close the hatch. Let's have a look at fuel here. Excellent. Happy with that. And tyre state is good. Remove the chock. And then we'll come back around here. We'll have a quick look at the stall warner. That's all nice and... Uh, Neat. Now, something we need to look at now is the pitot heat. Now, the uh, pitot heat uh, cover has been removed, but of course, what we need to do now is check that it's actually going to heat up. So, I'm going to jump back in. I'm going to whack the battery on. I'm going to whack the pitot heat on. Now, you might ask, why didn't I do that at the start before I jumped out? Because that's what you'd normally do, and that's absolutely right. That's what you'd normally do. But I do tend to find, especially when I'm making videos, but that by the time I've got round to that section, because I'm waffling, the pitot tube has cooled down. So, And, of course, I don't want to leave the battery on for too long. 
So let's just go back outside and we'll have a look. You can just see, if I get it, you can just see that heat haze coming up off the pitot tube. So let's have a look now. And that's nice and hot. Jump back in. Of course, if uh, Squadron Dog 2 was skilled enough, he could have done that for us. But uh, sadly, that's not his thing. So that's the Pito heat checked and also the stall warner there. Okay, landing light there is good. Back round here. Let's have a look at the tip tank. That's all good. It does help having um, head tracking, of course. It's almost like VR being able to... Uh, check the fuel there. Third dram of the day. That's all good. Nice and clean. You probably know this anyway, but if you don't know the uh, AccuSim system, that will simulate water in the fuel. Okay, aileron is nice and tight. And flap is the same. That's good. Static. Intake is unblocked and looking good. Back round to the back. Stabilator is nice and steady and rudder is good too. Certainly nothing hanging off there. Round to the side. Static there is good. That's fine. And uh, lastly but not leastly, we have the bagage door as they say on the continent. Uh, we're not taking any baggage apart from mental baggage, which we're going to forget as we take to the skies. Uh, so we can leave all that there. Don't need to worry about that. Can you get rid of these bags, please? Whoever put them there. Thank you. Right, let's jump into the cockpit. Okie doke. Right, we can now close the door. Uh, get the right one, boy. There we go. Let's latch it. Okie doke. So we've done a walk around. Uh, what else have we had a look at? We looked at the battery. Uh, we've done our fuel. That's all good. And that is fine. Right. Okie doke. Now, uh, I need to pull up the checklists. So pre-flight is complete. Passengers briefed. Don't move. All right. Uh, seat belts are secure. Uh, he's got a special dog seat belt that's invisible to the human eye. Uh, control locks I have removed. The parking brake is set. Oh, actually, let me just move this so I'm not giving you headaches by moving my head around so much. Let's leave that there. Uh, parking brake is set. Gear switch is down. The Comanche has got a three position gear switch, which we'll talk a bit more about in a bit. Um, but that needs to be in the down position, which is obvious. Uh, flaps we can now pull up. Uh, radios are all off. Just checking that. Autopilot master is off. Avionics master is off. All electrical switches are off. Circuit breakers. This is the bit I wanted to show you. Accusim in action. I noticed it from the front page, but can you see... We have two circuit breakers that are popped out. I'm trying to get it into the light where we can read it, but uh, there we go. So Navcom 2 and the dome lights. There we go. So we'll pop those back in and make sure I've not missed anything else. Yeah, that's all good. And then now if I quickly go back to uh, here, you can see... Uh, no, it wasn't there, was it? Um, boom, 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 boom. Oh, maintenance, there we go. See, breakers, they are all popped in now. I just noticed before when we were on this page that we had a couple popped out and got all excited because that's what Akisim does to you. It makes you excited when your circuit breakers pop out. Right. Uh, where do we get to? Yeah, rotating beacon on. And that's our before engine start checklist complete. Let's go to engine start. Fuel selectors to tie tank. Well, I've got them on both, so we're going to leave them there. Uh, mixture is rich. Throttle is cracked. Prop is fully forward. Carb heat is off. That's there. Uh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. I thought so. My eyes were deceiving me then. Uh, that's cabin heat there, carb heat there. Uh, master switch on. You can hear the rotating beacon there. Fuel pump on. 
check the pressure here we will just watch this gauge wait for it to there we go it's starting to move now and while we're at it both fuel tanks are full matching what we were seeing in the uh, on the inspection so that's all good uh, so fuel pump off we will now primer one two three four five mags both on and let's start every start in the comanche is slightly different so we'll see what this one gives us course we didn't shout clear prop did you of course it didn't that's your job okay um i must admit i should do it for realism but sometimes especially when my uh, lovely wife is upstairs i do feel a bit of an idiot shouting clear prop uh, but uh, she's very patient with me uh right so we've done that oil pressure is good everything is coming up as it it should do all temperature of course is yet to rise and now we're going to lean you notice the engine was a little bit rough after starting but that's evened out now again that's the great thing about Accusim. everything comes to life it is absolutely beautiful okay right let's get the avionics on now i'm going to put the nav lights on uh, we can leave everything off at this stage because now we need to do the whole ATC thing. So just firing up the uh, GTN. What I am going to do actually is let's load in the flight plan. So go into here, go into Pause. System test OK. Go into catalog, go into menu, import. And where are we? Go EGLF to EGFF. Have we got any conflicts? We don't. Of course we don't, because we've now got navigraph loaded into the gtn how beautiful is that no problems nothing missing love it to bits there we go uh right i'm going to see what atc does i've also got a procedure to load in we've got a uh, sid that we need to load in but i'm just going to do the atc bit first and then we're good to go let's just get rid of this for a moment and let us go back to the map so we're using pilot to atc for atc a quick caveat um it does have a tendency to do some funny things um recently i'm using beta versions uh so sometimes it can uh, we can suddenly lose it in flight and it's as if the atc has just stopped responding if that happens then i will disconnect it and we'll carry on as normal but i think it's quite nice to have atc it just adds to adds a little bit of immersion to it uh, while i remember let's just go into fuel payload and let's update the digital engine monitor there we go so that's that done right atc so looking across at my pilot to atc uh, screen our ground frequency is 121.8 and we are going to uh, add that in here one two one actually no eight is let's do let's do eight is first let's try and have a semblance of uh, professionalism here one two eight decimal four that'll do Barbara information oscar 1050 Zulu winds are 290 at 4 knots. Visibility 6 miles. Skies clear. Temperature 6, dew point 3. Current QNH is 1002. Arriving and departing runway 06. Farnborough information Oscar. 1050 Zulu winds are 290 at 4 knots. Okay. Visibility 6 miles. Skies clear. Temperature 6, dew point 3. Current okay. QNH is 1002. Arriving and departing runway 06. I have... Um... Ombra information Oscar. 1050 Zulu winds are 290 at 4. I have the, uh, the ATC set up 
suit for the co-pilot or as we have here um, squadron dog number two to change the frequency so that's why I couldn't understand why when I switched the frequency I could still hear the ATS but that's because uh, it had already done it uh, right so we're now on ground frequency 121.8 uh, quick look around we've got the ATIS everything is tickety-boo there so now we're going to call for our IFR clearance uh, you have to talk to it in a certain in a certain way so uh, bear with me because it might seem a bit stilted to you but this is how we have to communicate with pilot to ATC Farmer Ground, Piper Golf, Alpha Papa, X-Ray Judy, ready to copy IFR clearance. Golf Alpha Papa X-Ray Juliet is cleared to echo Golf Foxtrot Foxtrot. Climb via the Haze 2 Lima departure, with the Hazel transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 06. Climb to 3000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances 1 minutes after departure. Radar director on 130.05. Squawk 4233. Right, let's just copy that in. 4233. Golf Alpha Papa X ray Juliet is cleared to Echo Golf Foxtrot Foxtrot. Climb via the Haze to Lima departure with the Hazel transition, then as filed. Climb to 3,000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances one minute after departure. Radar director on 130.05, squawk 4233. Golf Alpha Papa X Ray Juliet read back correct. QNH is 1002, let us know when you're ready to taxi. QNH is 1002, Piper Papa X Ray Juliet. all good okay so there we go we've got our ATC clearance uh, 3,000 feet on the departure which is absolutely fine now 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 let's just come back here let's have a quick look at the instruments uh, I'm just checking that nothing is, is getting a bit untoward because we're sitting on the ground here uh, right what do I want to do so I'm going to first of all I'm going to switch to this view and then let's lock it so going to go into procedures and our departure which I'm going to cross check up here is the Hazel to Lima departure Hazel to Lima and we're on way 06 and the transition is Hazel so we'll load that departure it is absolutely fantastic to be able to I mean quite often the the uh, the air act that was in the TDS before was correct but it is lovely to know that when you do all this kind of stuff now it's going to be exactly as what you're seeing in your ATC if that uses Navigraph it's exactly what you're going to see in uh, Navigraph charts all that kind of stuff it's beautiful love it okay so there's our departure we're going to load that we'll go back and the other cool thing now is that if we pop it onto charts can see our charts on it so we go for departures and let's have a look it's the hazel to lima and there you go we've actually got our uh, our chart in there now I just think that's absolutely gorgeous uh right we'll leave that in there for the time being and uh just see how that tracks but you can see uh, you can see how that's going to go. The only thing I am not sure about is... I wonder how we... There we go. Full. There we go. I was trying to remember how to do that. Brilliant. Right, there we go. So we can see our departure on there. We can see that we there's our 3,000 feet that we've got to maintain uh, as far out as Hazel. Wonderful. Right, let's go back to the map. And let's just come back from there we go and just get back to the view that I wanted there okay so we're all set we're nicely warmed up now because I've been sitting here waffling uh, quick look down at the switches just to double check everything is okay there we're nicely leaned out 
that's looking fine I am going to make sure the cabin vents are closed and that is all good and I'm just going to what we got here I'm just going to open up the heat a little bit it's a chilly day today it's certainly chilly once you get uh, once you get up into the air and uh, I don't want uh, squadron dog number two to get too chilly that would be uh, that would not be good at all okay right uh, what did they I just need to get my call sign correct because I don't normally use this call sign um, so I don't think it uses the it's not going to let me use golf x-ray Juliet I don't think it is anyway um, so I might have to give the full one let's see anyway I'll try the short one actually just just to see what happens Golf X-ray Juliet ready for taxi try that again just in case Golf X-ray Juliet ready for taxi yeah didn't like it so let's go the uh, let's go the whole hog Golf Alpha Papa X-Ray Juliet ready for taxi. Well, this is a little bit unfortunate. It looks like the uh, ATC has checked out. Unless I'm... Uh, let's have a look. should be right. Golf Alpha Papa X-Ray Juliet ready for taxi. Golf Alpha Papa X-Ray Juliet taxi to runway 06 via taxiways Alpha. Hold short runway 06. Taxi to runway 06 via taxiways Alpha. Hold short runway 06. Papa pa Get my, get my P's mixed up. Taxi to runway 06 via Taxiways Alpha. Hold short runway 06. Piper Papa X-Ray Juliet. Yeah, it's kind of using an American call sign, isn't it? So, uh, the taxiway information is coming from, um, is coming from the uh, ATC software not from Navigraph. You can go in and you can program the ATC software uh, so that it sees the same taxiways as you've got elsewhere. So that's why it's coming out a little bit different. So what I think we're going to do is we'll come round here and uh, we'll taxi that way. So I guess we're using... Let's just toot in a little bit. Yeah, so we'll be using... Uh, Foxtrot and uh, yeah, Foxtrot. Okay, let's get going. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. It's ready five hours ago. I do hope the added immersion of my dog impressions is adding to your enjoyment. And uh, while I'm saying it, we do have a Discord, particularly cracking Discord. Which is much less to do with a YouTube channel and more to do with a community of people who love aeroplanes, uh, especially GA warbirds, helicopters. Some really helpful people there as well if you've got any technical questions, but we uh, post screenshots, we do group flights, we even have a uh, photography section now, and we also have a model making section if you're into building kits. If you have that Zen like patience that sadly I completely lack. We've got a section there as well. But it would be good to see you there, so uh, I'll put the link down below, pop along, say hello, and uh, we'll see you there. This of course is the Burning Blue Design Farnborough. They did a lovely job on it. Farnborough's uh, fairly local to me. Never flown out of here. I've been here for the uh, air show, of course. Um, but... Uh, Definitely mixing it up with the posh jets. Look at that hangar. The detail in there is fantastic. 
Yeah, don't need your shiny jet. I've got a dog. I've got a propeller. I've got a Comanche. There we go. So a nice tootle down here. Quick look around. One of the things you also have to be careful of, which we'll see in the checks, is you can see uh, that there is a difference between the gyro on the HSI and the actual whiskey compass. And that's something that uh, A2A simulate rather well in this. Up over here. Also using AccuSeason by the way, Rex AccuSeason advanced. Uh, so the trees are, trees are starting to show a little bit more colour now, I think. Of course in real life we've got some blossom. Nice to see the winter is finally disappearing. So, uh, be interested to see what happens with the ATC. The ATC needs to uh, to see me in the right position where the ATC expects me to see for everything else to work. So, um, I'm hoping this should uh, this should work out. But like I say, you can go into the ATC software and you can program in the individual taxiways to make corrections. So, if you were using, for example, if you were using Farmer a lot and you wanted to get every taxiway exactly right, you can manually change that. I'm not sure why it doesn't automatically take it from the uh, from the data, but there you go. Right, so we will just pull up here and see what it does. Right, okay, let's pull up the... Um, Pull up the go back here. checklists. Uh, oh, naughty boy, he didn't do a proper taxi checklist before, did we? Because we jumped ahead. So the primer is locked, avionics is on, ammeter is checked, radios are on, transponder as required, altimeter we've set, heading indicator. So let's have a quick look now at what I was talking about. So that is just on just under 21. And as you can see, we are way over here, so we pop that in. People will be having fits because I mixed it, missed the uh, taxi checklist. Probably already left saying how inaccurate. Anyway, uh, right, so that's done. Altimeter is set, heading indicator is set, landing gear lamp is uh, green. You can't, if I turn off the nav lights, there you go. When the nav lights are on, that is dimmed. That's why you'll see a slight difference there. Um, nav lights uh, as required, so I put those on now. Parking brake released, and uh, brakes. Well, I've already tested those as we were as we were moving along. So we're going to do a quick run-up check. I think what we'll do is. I mean, the wind isn't particularly strong here. But let's come round here. I'm just going to give myself. To wind. Right, so position into wind, we've done brakes, I'm holding, fuel quantity check, uh, both good. Fuel selectors, 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 desired tank, we've got them on both. Mixture fully rich for the run up. Throttle 2000 RPM. Engine instruments check. Yep, yeah, that's all good. No problems there. Uh, let's check the mags. This is the bit where I accidentally switch it off. So let's see. It's to the right. Back to both. The left. See, left is uh, left is a little bit coffee there. A bit lower. It'd be interesting to see. Uh, be interesting to see how that behaves once we get in the air. Could be a little bit of fouling going on. We can have a quick look at that. Actually, let's have a quick look at that. If I go into engine analyzer now, let's see. If I put it back onto, I just want to uh, check something. 
see our little dots there? That little dot there means that there's a little bit of plug fouling going on, so I suspect that's what we're seeing. Uh, right, okay. Back to... We've done that. Let's cycle the prop. Third one. Pull that lovely oil out to the governor. And now we're going to reduce down to 1800 and check that it's steady. Let's get it in the right spot. There we go, that's good. And uh, check the carb heat. Oh, hang on. Put it back forward. Carb heat. See a drop on the RPM there. That's good. Okay, so that's the run up. There we go. Slightly uh, out of order there. Should have done the taxi checklist right at the beginning. Very naughty of me to miss that. And as I say, there will be people in fits of rage that I uh, miss that. But uh, I'm just eager to get in the air. So, uh, let's just watch the speed there, boy. You're getting a little bit too ahead of yourself. So, let's stop here. There we go, and we'll do a quick before takeoff check. So controls free and correct. Yeah, there we go. We've still got that uh, yoke in vision, so we can see that doors are latched where they should be. Uh, what else was I looking at? Uh, let's go back. Rudder trim as required. Not using any rudder trim, so that's central. Elevator trim neutral. This is something you really do have to check. If you saw my last Comanche flight, you'll see I made the mistake. If you don't have that in the neutral position, uh, because it's persistent state, it'll remember where it was last time. So if you landed with a lot of, um, you know, elevator nose up trim, then that's where it'll be when you come and fly next. And the last time I did a video with this, I was stupid and hadn't checked that and the nose wanted to come up early, so on takeoff, so that was quite interesting. Uh, flaps we're not using, that's fine. Fuel selectors are both on. I'm going to leave that because that's all working nicely. And we've got good um, we've got good fuel indicated. Fuel pump on. Mixture is fully rich. I'm going to put the strobe and the landing lights on now. I'm going to put the pitot heat on. Carb heat is off. Engine gauges, another quick look at those. Everything is good there. Strobes I've already put on, pitot heat I've already put on, landing lights I've already put on. I was running ahead of myself. Quick look at the takeoff, blah, 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 de blah, blah, de blah, blah. Good, okay. Now I will uh, remove that for the moment. Let's just get a few other things set up. There we go. Okay. Right, fingers crossed, this is going to work. Now, what did I have to call myself last time for it to work? Uh, Hyper Papa X-Ray Juliet is what it seems to like. Ready for departure, Piper Papa X-Ray Juliet. Hyper Papa X-Ray Juliet contact tower on 122.77. Tower on 122.77, Meridian, Papa, X-Ray, Juliet. <laughs> I said Meridian. That's, uh, that's my call sign with the uh, VA. That was, uh, that was uh, habit. Tower on 122.77, Papa. I'll get it right at some point. Tower on 122.77, Piper Papa X-Ray Juliet. There we go. And uh, Squadron Dog 2 has changed the frequency there. Five 
Barbara Tower, Golf Alpha Papa X-Ray Juliet ready for departure. We are going to dump the ATC. That's a shame. But uh, it's being a pain in the neck. So uh, we're going to remove that. I, I always say I should... Uh, when I do these flights and it goes wrong that I'm not going to use it again but then I always do um, I just think it does add to the immersion but it's a shame when it goes wrong really looking forward to see what Beyond ATC does although I'm not sure I've fully understood the uh, pricing models yet but we'll have a look right let's move forward we'll take the runway been sitting on the ground here with the mixture rich uh, for a while so we'll see how the engine runs when we uh, need it Let's line up. And as we're just moving forward here a little bit, I'm going to put us back into charts. There we go. So what we got. Just checking the HSI there. That's good. Happy with that. Pity about the ATC there. That would have added a little bit extra, but it is very temperamental. As I say, there's it's beta versions at the moment and I think uh, I think I'm just going to hold out for Beyond ATC now and use that. don't use ATC very much because most of the time I'm blasting about in Warbirds but uh, for a flight like this it definitely adds something to it. Okay and let's hold there. Right so it's going to be uh, 062 on departure and we're going to need to be above two and a half thousand feet. So I'm just uh, just having a look at that. And that leg is 4.1. Okay. We've got our map down here, which really helps. So quick look around, make sure that everything's okay. Haven't done anything stupid. Fuel pumps on. Uh, that's all on. That's all good. And what I will do is I'm not going to um, turn the autopilot on, but I am just going to get it warmed up. And we're going to be on a heading of 062. So let's just get that plumbed in. Again, um, I know you shouldn't really be sitting on the ground on an active runway doing this sort of thing. But uh, there we go. Okay, let's go. Imagine sounding okay. maybe drifted to the left a little bit there right positive rate of climb touch the brakes gear up now because I'm using the Bravo my gear controller only has uh, two positions but we'll talk a bit more about that shortly very interesting playing the Comanche, it's so damn realistic and uh, you, uh, you have to be ready for it. Just come back a little bit on the power. A little bit gusty up here, see it's rocking around a little bit. Above a thousand feet, so if you'll put them off. Watching our progress there. It's fantastic having charts on the GTN. So cool. I'm 
which are looking magnificent. It's quite realistic live weather from what I saw out the window as well, so uh, that's all good. Of course, we can also use the HSI to track our uh, track how good we are on the course. I was just looking at the uh, the map. Maybe we can see just make a slight correction there. Now uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about the autopilot. By the way, someone on my Comanche preview video, there we go, 3,000 feet, uh, did make the observation that I hadn't really demonstrated a um, GPS capture and following so we'll talk a bit more about that right, let's uh, need to come down a little bit looking for now 152 Keep the turn in. She certainly wants to climb today. But uh, would have got told off by ATC there for busting the altitude. I'm just trying to uh, rectify that now. And then once we've done this next dog leg, I'll put it onto autopilot and then I can show you a few things. But at the moment I just want to, uh, to hand fly it for a little bit. So this leg is... Uh, what's that? Oh, I can use this button now that I've set it up, can't I? There we go. 4.2. Climbing again. She really wants to climb. Because I'm not flying for the VA, I haven't got a fully loaded aircraft, so I just realised this is probably the f first time I've flown a pretty empty aircraft, apart from me and the dog, in a long time. Uh, what are we looking at next? Two, uh, 242 is the next heading. I'm just going to whack that in in anticipation. To, as I said, I'm no expert, as you probably guessed, uh, no expert at doing this kind of flying, so this is all practice for me. Again, I'm not, uh, not flying the needle, I'm kind of looking at the map and looking outside. Right, so now we want to bring it round to 242, let's watch the altitude, let's hold the altitude. Come back bit on everything. Climbing again, what's that? So what I'm going to do now is just try and again. So many things you have to keep an eye on. I know that there's many people out there who do this kind of thing a lot and who will be guffawing at my altitude busts and all that sort of thing. This is definitely something I need to practice more often. Let's uh, trim the aircraft out a bit. Half the reason we're probably uh, busting altitudes is, in, is that the trim isn't properly set up. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is put it onto. 
track. High track. And then I'm going to put it onto altitude. So now the aircraft is uh, flying itself. I'm going to take my feet off the pedals. And now we're just looking for indications on trim. Just to see the aircraft will tell us if it needs to it needs us to trim at all. Put the power back in now. So everything seems to be settling out nicely. You can see, let's use that. There we go. So we are following the SID quite nicely. So one of the things to to cover off uh, is the GPS, the ability of the autopilot in here to uh, follow the. There we go. It's one of those, just for a moment, then wanted us to check the trim. Um, let's have a look at the map. Down trim a little bit. There we go. So the type of autopilot that we've got in the Comanche here is not like an ultra-modern uh, autopilot that's going to preempt the next stage. This is very much like if I got our uh, squadron dog number two there and held a biscuit in front of his nose, he's not going to preempt where I'm going to go next, he's just going to follow that biscuit as I wave it around very cruelly. And this is how this autopilot works. So where you've got these tight turns like we're looking at here, um, it's not going to preempt those, it's going to reach that point and suddenly go, whoa, and then it'll start trying to turn on a rate one turn and you're going to be all over the place. So you cannot use this autopilot for tight GPS following courses. That's not inaccurate, that's absolutely accurate to this type of autopilot. That's that's the Comanche, that's what this aircraft is about. It's not a uh, a modern aircraft with a modern autopilot in it. So you have to understand that. Um, and you have to work around that. And there's two ways you can work around that. You could work around that using uh, heading mode. So you preempt that heading change and you put it onto the new heading. Or you can hand fly it. So if we look at this section here, for example, the autopilot's going to fairly easily be able to uh, make this change. It's nice and smooth. The biscuit will just move to the right a bit and we've got plenty of time for the aircraft to no account for that. For this leg here we're going to have to help it so what I'll do is I'll use heading mode uh, just to help us do that. So let's come out of here I'm going to preempt 171 uh, where have you gone? So let's just preempt 171. So that's set up and when the time's right I'm going to put the aircraft into heading mode and then it will sweep round, nice and simple. So as you can see, it's still doing a great job of following it very nicely, no problems there at all. And uh, just double checking with myself, we're at 3000 feet, not flight level 030, so I can leave the parametric setting as it is. Uh, and then I think what we'll do is we'll probably just go up to, I think the flight plan, the original uh, ATC flight plan, had is eventually climbing to flight level 050. But uh, I think we'll stay at 3000 feet for a while, it's quite nice isn't it? It's quite good for uh, having a look at the ground. You see the weather's bouncing around a little bit. But, uh, that tone there was the GPS, sorry, the autopilot, just momentarily potentially asking for a bit of trim input but it's gone. You enjoying this mate? All good? Excellent. OK, 
getting a few pauses in the sim today, which is a bit frustrating. Right, let's have a look. So if I now bring this down here. So you can see we're going to be coming up to the next turn now, so I'm going to preempt it by uh, just leaving it a little bit longer. Probably, I probably left it a bit late there, perhaps. Maybe not. It's coming around okay. Let's have a look outside. Yeah, that's not bad, actually. That's not bad. Let's just bring the turn around a little bit, because what we want to do now is uh, intercept this line here. get the idea. That's how you do it. So we're helping the GPS out a little bit by turning that corner. If you left it on to, uh, if you left it on track mode then it would just go uh, go flying off. So we'll watch the line here. And we should start to uh, intercept that. You're looking at within 10 degrees essentially. You want to be within 10 degrees then it, you'll get a nice capture. So I'm now going to put it onto track mode. There we go. And then that should uh, should intercept nicely. And then that brings us to Hazel, and that is the end of our standard instrument departure. So let's go back to the normal map now. There we go see how that looks on here. So again we've got our 3,000 feet coming up to Hazel and the final leg of the SID. So that gives you an idea. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more flying or more of this kind of flying back in the King Air. That's kind of where I started off doing a lot of this kind of flying. The Black Box King Air doing long routes. So I'm going to be mixing it up a bit doing some more flying in the King Air and uh, also doing some of it in the Comanche, but the Comanche is a great place to to practice maybe some of these older skills. The King Air, of course, has got a very bang up to date autopilot that will follow, uh, say bang up to date, of course, it's probably a little bit older as well, but it's one that will preempt these kind of turns anyway. Um, so here's a good example. Let's see what it does now. So it's going to struggle with this turn, I think. I'm going to just leave it on track mode and see what it does. There you go. So we are going way outside. It's struggling to make that turn. We didn't preempt it. And now we're just going to kind of seesaw around. So I'm going to get us back onto heading mode. Just going to intercept. So bang, bang. There we go. And let's just bring us around. So you have to keep an eye on that. And that's one of the reasons why I was quite happy with this route, really, because it gave me a chance just to show you how all those different things are going to work. So this is taking us down to Sam now, which of course is the, uh, the VOR at Southampton. So you can see I've set the heading now just to allow us to intercept, and I'm going to leave it on there for a little bit until we get close to the magenta line. Right, so 3,000 feet, we don't necessarily need to, uh, or you know, below 3,000 feet perhaps, you don't necessarily need to uh, lean out too much, but I am going to lean out a little bit, just to conserve a bit of fuel. There we go, it's not going to make a huge difference at this level, it's certainly not going to make 
make a huge difference to power. We can also lean out using the uh, digital engine management tool here, but uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I might have a play with that in a bit. I tend not to use it. I tend to look at the um, uh, EGT gauge and listen to the engine. I'm going to do it the old way. Right. While we're doing this, actually no, let's just intercept and then I can show you. So I said I wanted to talk to you a bit about hardware. Now if you haven't watched it, why the hell not? Um, the uh, the video just before this, which was at uh, the Battle of Britain Memorial flight of RAF Coningsby, uh, very grateful to Phil from Authenticate for inviting me along to have a look at the simulator that he has built with the RAF up there um, to help the public have an understanding of how these things work uh, but also now the crews, the flight crews and also the engineers are using it to, uh, well the flight crews are using it to practice emergencies and have a look at um, you know, potential air display areas so they can get used to the ground uh, before they've actually been there and also they're using it to fly failures and emergencies, uh, it's a great tool for that. And the ground crews are using it for other things, uh, but especially, for example, because they have to start Spitfires up on the ground, uh, it gives them a chance to practice doing a Spitfire start up before they actually jump into the real thing. Anyway, there we are. We are now established on that. So I'm going to quickly show you a video which I think might be of interest to you. This is, this is from the CAD that A2A uh, gave me so yeah. that we could create a... Um, PA24 Comanche throttle, TPM throttle, uh, and the ignition and the and the, the mags and the gear, three position gear. Um, and that's really interesting because obviously with the uh, with a lot of controllers you've just got two position, but because yeah. the Comanche has got three, yeah. you've now got the ability to properly simulate that and you control it. That's right. That's great. And again, that's a reusable thing I've put in there call it a click it's like a multi-click thing so okay however many you need so with the tiniest change it could be a two position yeah and the very same thing that's in there in a slightly bigger version is in the p51 pedestal which oh, has got okay. seven positions of flat lever and it's the same thing so it, really? again you, rather than have to create you know creative new ways to make a thing there's really only a few types of action you know you've got clicky actions you've got yeah push pull which has got that that damping that you liked on the primer. We just yes. Did. Yeah, have a push of that. Tell me what you think of that action. Thank you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <That's not a> <laughs> <laughs> Feels like you're yeah. really pushing this it's against so mechanical, doesn't it? Do you know what the the thing is? Straight away, you feel you could be. It, it's precise. You can feel that you would. You kind of imagine yourself using it. You would have that precise control over. Yeah. It. It's not going to slip and slide. That's it's it. going to be exactly where just you left push it. Push it where you want it. You're not going to yeah. have to shoot. It's just yeah, going yeah. to be right. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, we've got the. Oh, that's that same hydraulic damping, which is what's in those things. It's yeah. on all three of those. And um, after a bit of feedback from people, I th I'm going to have the option on the side here, which is the carb control, carb heat, okay, and then a then a primer pump as well. I'll just they'll go on the side there. Fantastic. Um, and that'll be a great unit. And you've got the parking brake. That's nice great. On that. Got everything. So that that's authentic, and it can go in one of those, or it can just go on your desk. You know, and you can just. Take it off in five minutes and put it away, stick it in a cupboard or put it back on your desk. That's, that's the amazing that's, thing. That's the point. It's not for the kind of DIY copy yeah. builder who wants to, who loves to get his soldering iron out and yeah. get drilling things. It's which is what I didn't quite realise until I saw some videos, which I will link in the yeah. in the video, uh, where you've actually set these up on a normal desk using the brackets and everything. Yeah. It's quite incredible how versatile it is. I always thought you had to do a proper cockpit build and you know have uh, something like that set up for it but actually no you can just put it on a normal desk so there you go looks interesting doesn't it i think uh, certainly adding to the immersion of flying the comanche that's going to be something that's going to be very useful indeed and uh, one of the things just to point out is that the first module is going to be the tpm with the uh, parking brake and then other modules will be available once you've you've built one whether you've got someone else to 3d print it or you uh, 3d printed it yourself 
you can just bolt the other modules onto it. It's really quite uh, quite a clever system. They have a system of uh, there are people in the authenticate community who will print these parts off for you. Really, at mates rates, but there is a standardised uh, price structure, so uh, you can have confidence that when you're buying it, you're buying it at a fair price, and that is something that. Uh, you'll be able to see on their website. So, here we go. While that video was on, we just turned another leg and I've just intercepted using heading mode. And we're now on the next track and I've just put it back onto high track so that the autopilot will follow the magic magenta line. Nice and easy. Yeah, I think that piece of hardware will be uh, will be exciting for the Comanche. The Comanche is, is hands down the best GA aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulation at the moment. It's won awards, and I think most people would agree with that. And to have that uh, that quality of control there uh, will be absolutely fantastic. And to have it in the right position on the desk as well will be really good. Comanche is, uh, is a much-loved aeroplane, of course it's been out in FSX and uh, um, P3D for some time, but uh, now that it's in MSFS it's opened it to a wider audience and uh, I know people will be interested in that, which is why I wanted to show it again. If you want to see more detail on that then of course uh, watch the video, I'll put a link to the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight video down below just in case you uh, you missed that, but it was a cracky visit, really interesting. Anyway, here we are in the cruise. We're still at 3,000 feet rather than any kind of flight level. And uh, you can see just a little bit, maybe winter is turning to spring out there. Got a little bit more colour in the ground. Looking forward to when it's summer nice green trees and it's warmer. It was cold last night. Woke up this morning with frost on the cars and that sort of thing. What's the outside air temperature at the moment? Uh, zero. There you go. So a tad chilly, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. So there you go, coming up to the next turn. I'm going to leave it on track this time. Let's have a closer look. So you can see the aircraft is going to quite easily deal with that one. Not a challenge at all. So that's why it may be that uh, if you have tried GPS, you, you know you might find why is it that some of my turns why is it some of the uh, waypoints it's following and some it isn't and that's really the simple reason. Different type of autopilot. Okay, well, I could bore you to death by yakking on for the uh, next legs of this journey, but uh, what I'll do is I'll carry on flying and then uh, I'll come back to you in a little bit. It's coming up to Newbury on the nose now there. You can uh, just see the race course, just on the tip of the nose. So just coming up to Kennet now, 
and uh, again I'm just going to leave the aircraft on the uh, track mode just to see I think it won't have any problem too much problem with this turn but we'll leave it on there and see what it can do I always say but the graphics in this sim are just really quite stunning who doesn't like looking out over rolling landscape with a tip tank in view I love how that wing flexes just a little bit so immersive just over there I don't think we can really see it at the moment the cloud is, is almost in the way Swindon so we're going to be coming up to Sorp and then doing a left turn and uh, flying over Swindon heading towards Cardiff uh, at Cardiff I think we're probably going to do a I don't think I know we're going to do a ILS approach to runway 30 I could do it practicing my ILS approaches if I'm honest so uh, we're going to do that and then you lot can have a good old laugh watching me do an ILS approach There we have Swindon now. It's moments like this with the cloud, with the lighting, with that scenery, that looks so realistic. That is just crazy. Absolutely incredible. If you're a Swindonian, hello. And uh, I've left it on track and the autopilot's coping quite well with this turn. So you can see it's not, uh, you don't have to do the manual intervention every time. you just got to look at, the, look at the turn a little bit and think, well, is it going to cope with this? Do I need to do something about it? It's as simple as that really, just uh, use your noggin. That down there, by the way, was uh, is quite a large industrial area, but it includes a Honda factory. So if you work at the Honda factory, I presume it's still open. Hello. So here we are heading towards uh, Bristol now. We have, can't really see it. Well, you can just see it by the tip tank. We've got chipping them over there. Uh, it's lovely weather actually today. It's a little bit choppy, but it's not. Uh, it's not. Wind is too strong. You can see, we're getting bounced around ever so slightly, but the visibility is good. And there's a bit of cloud, which also helps to add to the lighting. Lovely GA flying weather. I'm really happy with my mix of uh, what I'm flying at the moment. I'm flying the Warbirds, which of course I love. I'm flying the Helicopters, which is a new obsession. I say new, we've been doing it for well over a year now, but it still feels new, uh, considering how old I am and how long I've been simming. Um, I've only really been flying choppers in the uh, last year and a half-ish, I guess, but loving that. And then flying a really nice GA aircraft like this, and. What I try and do is um, really challenge myself to hone certain skills, which is why, for example, one of the reasons I'm doing this IFR flight and I'm going to do an ILS approach um, is just to hone those skills. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not an expert. These aren't tutorials. I know there's plenty of you out there that can do this a lot better than I can. That's not what this is about. This is about you coming on a flight with me, probably having a giggle at how uh, rusty some of my skills are but overall hopefully just having an enjoyable flight 
that's what it is. Flight simming. It's for fun. It's to enjoy it. I try and take it as serious as I can. I certainly try and use it to learn new skills. Um, but at the end of the day, just because you're on YouTube doesn't mean that you think you are a flying instructor. You sometimes see comments from people saying, oh, these YouTubers, they, they do this and they make a mistake and they do that. Well, I think a lot of us would probably say we're not experts, we're not flying instructors. Mistakes will be made. I'm just a flight simmer. I'm just like anybody else who flies a sim at home as a hobby. Most of us aren't going to get it right all the time. Just see the bridge over there over to Wales, or one of the bridges I should say. Bristol up ahead. See Bristol Airport over there. We're getting ourselves in the way a little bit if we were doing proper ATC. M4 down there, good old M4. So let's have a look at the GTN again. So I'm going to lock off head tracking. There we go. So I want to load in, we're going to do the um, or is it the uh, ILS Y approach from runway 30? So, Cardiff was one of those ones I know back in the early days of me getting into doing this kind of flying. Cardiff was always one of the ones where I had issues with procedures and things uh, with the TDS because they didn't match up. So, this will be interesting to see what we get. So, let's go procedure, uh, approach approach and we want the ILS, uh, what did I say, the ILS 30Y, ILS 30Y and the transition is CDF1, so we've just got the uh, one option there which is fine, okay, that's all good, that's all programmed in, <coughs> load approach, I'm guessing that that transition is going to match mine. Now on uh, Navigraph there are two transitions. Uh, yeah, I think uh, rather let's have a quick look actually. Oh, let's not because we're busy. There are two ILS approaches to runway 30. I think one is for the bigger jets, one is for smaller GA. So I suspect that's what we've got here. We've got the smaller or smaller aircraft rather rather than big uh, airliners. So that's all nicely in there. That's in the box. Let's go back to map. There we go. So we've got that loaded in now. Happy with that. We come out. So very, very easy. Again, lovely to have the Navigraph information in there. If I now go to charts, we've got Cardiff, we've got approaches, now put in the uh, where is it ILS there we go runway three load in our chart beautiful there it is perfect and then when we get there the aircraft will appear on here as well so cool that's great having that in there one of the really cool things about this, which I'm going to have to try, is of course um, the ability now with uh, with VR, because the unit has all this in it, then you can uh, you can view your charts in VR on your GTM, which is going to be great. There we go. Just put the head tracking back in. So we're over Bristol now. Passing over to the north of it. And coming in for Cardiff. Now I know that the start of the uh, ILS arrival, 
approach rather is at 3,000 feet so we're still doing a right there but what I am going to do is let's just use Navigraph because I just want to check uh, what the Q&H is. Let's have a look at Open Airport. I'm just looking at my charts now. 1003 so we can just bob that on a little bit. Do an accurate job of flying the ILS approach. Last time I did an ILS approach in this aircraft was on video and the weather was atrocious so it was blooming all over the place um, and that was one of the things I, I quite often when I do these flights it's to uh, check out my weaknesses and check out what I need to focus on and uh, one of the things that definitely came out of that was the need to uh, check on that. There's the Clifton Suspension Bridge just down there. Do you see that coming up to the tip of the wing? It's a, a real landmark in these parts. Hello if you're from Bristol. We've got the port down there. So of course we've stayed on the uh, we've stayed on the same fuel tanks we had both quite often. If you saw the previous Comanche video, you'll see I switched between the two. I've left it on both tanks for this one. Just uh, doing something a bit different. What we'd normally be doing is, is swapping them over. So uh, putting the fuel pump on, changing the fuel tank selector, checking that pressure was good, and then putting the fuel pump off kind of switching those around the two but today do something a little bit different for me I'm just running on both tanks at the same time right so ahead of time let's have a play back down here again and uh, let me lock, actually move that out a bit and see if I can just angle it. There we go. And let's lock that off there. Brilliant. Okay. So let's bring back up charts. And we can just have a quick look. So we're going to be coming in overhead Cardiff. You can see here at 3,000 feet. And then we're going to be coming round and intercepting the ILS. So let's get a couple of things set up first of all. I want to get Cardiff, uh, the Cardiff VOR set up on our, um, on our NAV2 so that we can have a look at that. So let's do that. So I'm going to, instead of using that, I'm going to use frequencies here. So we'll go for uh, waypoint info, go VOR, and then, uh, what was the name of it? Let's look back here. Let's have a look. Okay, maybe I'm getting confused. Let's try that. That might be an NDB. It's an NDB, it's not a, uh, not a VOR. I thought we had a VOR, but we don't. Anyway, you can set up an NDB. Let's just move along. Turn on this. What's the frequency? 
see again. Eight eight decimal five. It's been a long time since I've done this. saw the needle up here change. So that's all working nicely. That's good. So we've got a DME set up. Let's come back to the map. Just have a quick look here, see what frequency we've got. Aetis Tower, we're not going to be using any of that. We've got the ILS uh, is 110.7 which is already set up there. So I'm going to switch that over so we've got that in the nav one box. So that's all good to go. Cool. Happy with that? What on earth did I think there was a VOR at, uh, at Cardiff? Shilly boy. every time I've flown into Cardiff I've always been using the GPS I've never actually uh, dialed in a nav aid so I think I've probably just assumed all this time that CDF is a uh, VOR and in fact it's not, it's an NDB bloody amateur right so we're coming in nicely now I'm just going to get myself ready to take back control going to put the landing lights on at this stage as we're approaching the airport. Uh, checklists approach. Uh, we'll do that when we need to, do that when we get a bit closer, blah de blah 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 blah. Yep, I'm going to do that a little bit closer actually. Bit too far out to be messing about with that. Uh, let's now go back to charts. see we are now appearing on the map. Let's have a quick look. So we need to be at uh, 1600 feet as we come round here to intercept. So that's what I need to remember. 1600 feet descent once we drop off. So I think what I'm going to do at this point is we'll take it off autopilot uh, so that I can do my thing. Uh, also just to get a grip of the aeroplane and just feel it out. Squadron dog number two seems to be quite happy. Let's just bring the checklist up again. So, Autopilot Master is off, fuel pump on, fuel selectors, desired tank, got them on both, and we have both tanks checked. Uh, fuel levels, done that. Fuel pressure, check. Mixture, bang it into rich. Prop, fully forward. Car heat. As required, don't need it, and the airspeed when we get round there is going to be 120, and we'll dangle the Dunlops and all that sort of thing as we uh, as we get further in. So let's come back on that. I'm going to come back a bit on the prop. I think that was a bit uh, probably did that a little bit too early for the kind of approach that we're doing. Makes a heck of a racket, and we've busted the altitude because I've been messing about with that. So let's. Uh, Come down a bit. There's Cardiff on the nose. Let's 
heading in the beat, 131. seems to be okay. Still need to reduce a bit of height. Let's trim. Trim a little bit. It's going to be uh, interesting with the authenticate controls as Phil and the community start getting more involved in it. Who knows what else can come out. And uh, as I said in the Big and Hill video, you don't need a uh, cockpit build to be able to use them. Right, let's now initiate our turn. It's 1,600 feet I'm going for. It's checking that the ILS is in the box, which it is. fine now. Quick double check of everything else. Fuel pumps on, landing lights are on. Now we can uh, turn on 2131. had some gyro drift. So let's just check that. I would say we've got a bit of gyro drift coming in there. Looking at the I'm looking at the whiskey compass now for the heading rather than the gyro. You can see we have had some gyro drift. So let's uh, watch that. As we can see from the map down here, you see how we've come over a little bit? This is going to be a little tighter than it should be, so I'm just going to initiate more of a right turn just so that we can come round. Climbed a little bit, which is not very good. Seven. So I'm just going to give it a chant. 
times in turn. Deal, trying to adjust it while we're in a turn, but uh, I'll do that once we're lined up. Uh, note to self that your uh, gyro drift checks a little bit more frequently and a bit earlier. To reduced height. I think the ILS has just kicked in now. here at this point. Yeah, visual with the runway now, which helps. Still wanting to uh, fly the ILS. It's trim. Makes life a lot easier. Nicely trimmed aeroplane, as I'm sure you know, makes life an awful lot easier. So we just want to capture that glide slope. I can't say enough, and I'm actually saying to this myself as well, because I know you probably know this anyway, but uh, trim really is your friend. Right, check green down, gear is down. Let's uh, do this properly. I hate fiddling about when I'm trying to do an ILS approach, but there we go. So, landing, gear indicator is down. Yes, 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 yes. That's all good. Brilliant. Let's get rid of you. Let's get back to trying to fly this ILS approach. So, on localizer, on glide slope. Flaps. Watch, we're just drifting slightly to the right, slightly too high, so let's come over and let's, uh, correct that. Adding in the flaps there just made us balloon ever so slightly. Trim, trim, trim. Speed is good. Intercepting glide slope. Let's 
Still really referring more to the needles rather than outside because I am practicing this ILS approach. At some point I will try and focus more on the outside rather than the inside. 500. Lovely view, it's Cardiff, isn't it? There we go. Speed's good. Another notch of flat. Anticipate that. So, a little bit low on the ILS now, as you can see, and actually we've got uh, four red lights now. Uh, that is me um, me forgetting this is a big runway for big jets and uh, ignoring the markers and everything um, rather than looking at it as a small strip I don't know if any of that makes sense but Awful, awful, awful. Be interested to see from the outside what happened there. It seemed to be going so smoothly, and then suddenly at the last minute. Anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that flight. Great to see what the TDS can do now that it's uh, tied up with Navigraph. That's a huge, uh, huge step forward and uh, really excited to see what Authenticate are going to bring to the Comanche now. Um, there's so many Comanche fans out there and to have hardware that matches it is going to be pretty damn cool. Anyway, thanks for coming along on the flight. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the channel again very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.